Ah, reluctant one. What do you oh, want to do? You know. <laughs> Thank you, Abraham. Hello, Esther. Hello, Jerry. It's been a long time coming here to see you. And I want to, first of all, thank everyone that's come today, and the energy in this room is amazing. And I've been listening to you now for probably 10 years, and this is the first session I've come to. And I have to say that being, I said to my partner, that being in the room, experiencing you firsthand is incredible. It's so much different, and I'm so grateful and thankful that I came today. So thank you for this opportunity. I'm a voiceover actor by trade, that's what I do. And I've been working with my voice since I was five years old, and I love the business that I'm in. About 10 years ago, when I discovered you and Wayne Dyer at the same time, I was losing my voice in my business. And I didn't know what it was at first, and went to doctors and eventually had surgery and was told that I had reflux and that was causing my voice to fail. And I had the surgery, and it was not successful. And eventually discovered a doctor who told me that I was, after hundreds of thousands of dollars of surgeries, told me that I was speaking in the wrong part of my voice. And I had used a voice for so many years that made me very wealthy, but my voice failed me. And something told me that I did some, I've been trying to figure out why I blamed myself, what I was doing, or I blamed other people, why were people directing me, coaching me in a certain way that made me lose my voice. I lost my homes, I, I got into a spiral that I could not get out of. And over the past few years, I've discovered that, I've discovered a new energy of how I use my voice in helping other people discover their authenticity. What I realized was I was using an inauthentic voice and became successful using it. The problem I have now is that I, you mentioned earlier about that there's a passion I know I have, but I'm stuck. I'm feeling fear, I'm feeling I know I can help and serve, but I just don't, I'm sitting stuck. And everyone's asking me, why are you stuck? Well, it isn't a wonder because You've had the microphone for a while, and it's all been off-path conversation. It's all right, because there is a feeling or a, an attitude, it's sort of a human tendency that says, need to kind of bring you up to speed with where I am by explaining how I got here. So you perpetuate the conversation in order to explain or defend or justify or even try to make a new jumping off point right. but every word about that is off path off path off path off path off path in other words the feeling of stuck is I want this but I'm here and 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 I want and so logically I want this and 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 I want this without adding the other you get unstuck because law of attraction and the laws of the universe and momentum and trajectory all bring you back along to where you want to be right. now you did say something we felt a little glimmer of it in you it was a vibrational thing that you actually put words to that really is what this is all about when you said I found some other things in other words I found something else I'm able to do these things that I maybe wouldn't have even been able to do if I hadn't had this resistance and so it's really inappropriate we love you so much for you or <laughs> anyone to say ever about yourself that something went wrong that it went wrong and it's easy to make those assumptions or draw those conclusions when you see livelihood go away or when you see something that you've been counting on not there or when things change in your life experience because it's easy to forget that with that contrasting experience you launched reaffirmed reconfirmed added power to added clarity to who you want and what you really want so your vortex picked up speed and who you are as an inner being gained momentum during that time that you were experiencing contrast that at any time you can then receive the benefit of 
We started to tell this story to our friend just a moment ago, and we really want to tell it to you, to all of you, visiting with someone one day, two people in the same seminar who felt that they had been on a productive path and then things had gone amiss. One was a man who had built a financial empire and he had lost it. And now I'm 60 something years old. I don't think that I have time to recover it. I feel lost. What am I to do? And another woman who was an artist who was traveling from New York to California. She wanted to do scenery and let her art be part of the Hollywood scene. And in route, someone broke into her car and stole her portfolio. So she didn't have anything to present in order to get a job. So first we said to her, what you were going to present is old news anyway, because you've been dragging that stuff <laughs> of what you've been doing around for so long. Your whole creative skill has evolved so much past what that was, that it was not a good representation of who you now are anyway. And that's why the universe helped you shed it from your experience. Right. It does not represent who you are. And to this man, we said to him, you have this vibrational portfolio that you take with you everywhere you go forevermore. It doesn't matter what part of it you are allowing to manifest in any point in time. The portfolio is intact. All you got to do is find the path of least resistance back to it. You follow? Yes. So what is in any point in time doesn't matter. It doesn't mean diddly squat. And the reason that it doesn't matter is because it doesn't matter. <laughs> the reason it doesn't matter is because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The only thing that does matter is what your vibrational relationship is with the portfolio that does matter. We've been calling this your vortex, the vibrational version of who you are. That's the only thing that matters. And so how you line up with this story, if we were standing in your physical shoes, we'd tell a different story. We would talk about the vibrational reality that what you have lived helps you to create, but we would not talk about any of those so things bad. that just split your energy. It's all irrelevant because you are new unto this world and new in your relationship to this magnificent vortex that you have created and that all all of your life has helped you to create. We so want every one of you to hear that it does not matter where you stand in relationship to anything that you think you want or anything that you want. We're not second guessing what you think you want. We don't mean it that way at all. No matter where you are, you are still on your path. If you could just know it, if you could just reach for a good feeling thought instead of a defensive one, instead of an explanatory one. I end up in the place, the, the perfect example you've used today of alignment and being out of alignment, the, the visuals that you've used in several examples has been amazing to me. And the way I feel now is because I say to my partner all the time, I'm having a bad voice day. And what I feel is the passion for this new business I feel that passion, and you said you've heard use the word glimmer, that it is the glimmer of being on that path, but I feel like the path is here and the voice is here. Esther watches these magnificent athletes in a variety of sports that she has become addicted to. <laughs> and as she watches someone that she knows his ability, she knows his talent, she watches him stand there on the free throw line with no hindering whatsoever and watches him miss the shot and he could say I'm having a bad voice moment in other words he didn't lose his muscles he didn't suddenly go blind he doesn't have vertigo <laughs> <laughs> he has no legitimate excuse like you're trying to give yourself <laughs> What he has is a moment out of focus. What he has is somebody stupid enough. We love them all so much to try to throw that ball without his inner being. And why did it happen? Had a fight with his girlfriend. Somebody said something from the stand. His coach is chewing him out for something. Right. He got distracted from who he really is and what he really knows. Yeah. And then he demonstrated nothing more than his distraction. And that's what we want you to call that. You didn't lose your voice. You lost your connection temporarily. That's all. That's I, all. I, I believe that. I feel that. And yeah. 
I've never been able to crystallize it the way you crystallize it right now. Well, we're really smart. <laughs> we are infinite intelligence, you know. Yes. <laughs> but beyond that, we know everything you want and we know where everything that you want is in relationship to where you are. And there are so many more just like us who have your back who are rooting for you all day, every day, who know how to light up the path, who are lighting up the path. Meanwhile, you're mad at that person, you're mad at that person, you're mad at that person. But there's another thing that we really want to say about this. We really want you to take ownership of this. It's not wrong for you to choose to do something that feels better to you. Even if it isn't something that feels better to the other person. In other words, you've got to stop giving up your alignment for bogus reasons, you see. So it doesn't matter if you're blaming a person or a relationship or a doctor. Or the voice. Your voice is a byproduct of your alignment, yes. period. And no one can tell you that you are misusing your voice. In other words, it's so easy to get down the road and see somebody where they don't want to be and then start explaining how you got there with all kinds of conditional things. But those conditional things are irrelevant. It was always vibrational. It was always vibrational. Yeah. But Sorry. you pinch yourself off from your resources in this attitude of, I need to prove my, this is so screwy. I need to prove my worthiness to my source by pinching myself off from source and doing it on my own. Really? <laughs> really? No. When all source wants is for you to come along with all that you are and rediscover the ever moving qualities of your magnificent voice and all of the ways in which it can be expressed. Really? I have to, I have to say that this contraption is what I use every day and I have had such a fear of it for the last few years and sitting here with you I couldn't feel more relaxed and I don't have I'm not even paying attention to the voice at all you just reiterated I just I get into that place on my own when I'm by myself a fear and this is completely fearless so so just stop practicing that yeah. and notice the discomfort of it every time you do, I do and stay off the subject altogether and look at all of the other things that hold you in keen alignment and stop believing that it is wrong for you to choose what feels best for you. It is right for you to choose what feels best for you. It is right for you to choose what feels best to you. It is right for you to choose what feels best to you. And you've been doing it. You've been doing it better than you know that you've been doing it. We have enjoyed this interaction more than words can explain. We know who you are. We know what you want. And we are here to proclaim you on your path. We're not kidding you. You're on your path. You're not always going to be because things happen, but you're never again going to step off of it without knowing. And as you selfishly find the thought or the word or even the behavior that feels a little better that feels a little better and you don't beat up on yourself by saying oh I shouldn't have done that or oh, I'm sorry but instead you say I'm doing the best I know and this is the best I can do right here and now and it is good enough it is our promise to you that no matter where you stand in relationship to whatever it is you want it will unfold with such speed and most important satisfaction that you will understand the blessed nature of your being there is great love here for you and for now we are complete <laughs>